Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from Amanda Crochets and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to make this Stay Golden dishcloth. The Stay Golden dishcloth measures about 8 inches wide by 8 inches tall and is made using two basic crochet stitches which is the single crochet and half double crochet. So I really like the construction of this. You can definitely make this bigger or smaller if you so choose by just changing up the chain. So I really like the stitch definition and as you can see you have a little bit of a ridge here after you make your half double crochet stitches. And then on the back, it's pretty much the same. The only difference is that it's more flat, where on the front, you have that little bit of a ridge after each half double crochet row. I added a simple two row border for this dishcloth pattern, and I was good to go. So you could definitely make this in any color that you would like. You can make this in a multicolor or a solid color. You can even use a variety of solid colors to make a stripe pattern. So the possibilities are endless when it comes to making this Stay Golden dishcloth. So let's get started on today's tutorial on learning how to make the Stay Golden dishcloth. So for today's tutorial I'm using a new yarn that I have never used before and this is the Lion Brand Pima Cotton Yarn and this is a worsted weight number four yarn. And this is a 3.5 ounce skein or 100 grams. It's 186 yards or 170 meters. And it is 100% cotton, machine wash, gentle cycle, tumble dry. And the recommended needle size is an 8.5 millimeter. And the recommended hook size is an I9 5.5 millimeter. And the color I'm using today is called Mineral Yellow. And this is how much I had after just making one dishcloth. So you could probably make two dishcloths out of each skein, depending on how big you make them. And again, this is Pima Cotton. I've never used Pima Cotton before, but it's really, really soft. It's softer than the regular Lily Sugar and Cream, in my opinion. So I really like that a lot. And for your crochet hook, I'm going down one hook size and I'm using a size H 5mm crochet hook today. So to get started, you're going to make a chain and I ended up making a chain of 24. Now if you want to make this bigger or smaller, you can certainly do that by just making sure that you have an even number of chains. Okay, so to make a chain, you're going to yarn over your hook and pull through that loop on your hook. That loop on your hook does not count as a stitch. So you have one chain, two, three, four, five. Continue making 24 chains and I will meet up with you and show you how to make row one. Okay, once you have your 24 chains or any even number of chains, we can begin row one. For row one, you're gonna just make a simple single crochet row. So again, that loop on your hook does not count. You're gonna skip that very first chain and you're gonna work into the second chain from your hook. So insert your hook into the second chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now if you are a beginner crocheter, you want to put a stitch marker in this very first stitch so that way you know that that's going to be the very first stitch of the row and you will not miss it. And in the next chain, you're going to do the same thing. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. So continue making one single crochet in each chain across until you get to the very end. OK, 
Okay, so this is what your first row is going to look like with all those single crochets. And again, if you are a beginner, you're going to want to put a stitch marker in this very first stitch and in this very last stitch of the row. As you make more rows, you're going to move your stitch marker up so that way you know what the beginning and end of each row is and you will not miss your stitches and your ends will be even. So to make row two, you're going to create a chain one and turn and you're going to make a half double crochet right in that first stitch. So you're going to ignore the chain one and the loop on your hook and you're going to work right in that first single crochet stitch. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook in that first stitch and make sure you grab those two loops yarn over your hook pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops and that is your half double crochet again you want to move your stitch marker so it's in that very first stitch of the row next you're going to skip one stitch and in the stitch after that you're going to make two half double crochets. So again yarn over your hook, skip that next stitch and in the stitch after that make two half double crochets. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over your hook, Insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And you're just going to repeat this all the way across. So again, skip one stitch, and in the stitch after that, make two half double crochets. skip one stitch and in the stitch after that make two half double crochets. Repeat this across and I will meet you at the end of row two. Okay and then here is what row two looks like. So for row two you're going to start with one half double crochet in that very first stitch. You're going to have two, double two half double crochets in each of the stitches across. And in that very last stitch, you're going to have two half double crochets. So again, move up your stitch marker if you need to. And continuing on to row three, you're going to chain one and turn. In row three, you're just going to simply make a single crochet in each stitch across. So in that very first stitch, you're going to make a single crochet and then you're going to make a single crochet in each stitch across. Now for this pattern you're going to repeat rows two and three over and over again and that's going to get your pattern. So it's a nice and simple beginner friendly pattern and if you're more advanced then this is just a nice easy project to work on in between your larger or more difficult projects. Again, you can make this in any color and you can make a bunch of them for your kitchen or a friend or family member's kitchen. So again, just make one single crochet in each of the stitches across. Okay. And as you can see, when you make your single crochet row, that's when you start to get that little bit of a ridge on your dishcloth. So again, you're going to repeat rows two and three. So again, you're going to chain one and turn. 
and in that very first stitch you're going to make one half double crochet you're going to skip one stitch and in the stitch after that you're going to make two half double crochets and you're going to repeat this all the way across so again skip one stitch and make two half double crochets in the next stitch for rows 4 through 21 you're going to repeat rows 2 and 3 over and over again and I will meet up with you at the end of row 21. So here is what your dishcloth should look like after 21 rows. And now we can begin the border. So for the border you're just going to go ahead and chain one and turn and you're going to make a half double crochet in that very first stitch and in each stitch across the top of your dishcloth. So right in that very first stitch you're going to make a half double crochet and again make a half double crochet in each of the stitches across the top of your dishcloth and when we get to the first corner I will show you how to complete that corner and work along the side of your dishcloth. Okay, so I'm over at my next corner and I did want to mention that when you finish row 21 you should end with a single crochet row. So if you are making this dishcloth a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, you want to make sure that you end your dishcloth with a single crochet row so that way it matches the very first row we made which was also a single crochet crochet row. So just keep that in mind that you end that you start and end with that single crochet row. So now that we reach the corner, you're going to make three half double crochets in that corner stitch. So one, two, and three. And then you're going to turn your work, and we're going to work one half double crochet along the side of our dishcloth in the row end stitches. So right here you can see your single crochet and right here you can see the half double crochet. So you're going to be working in each of the end row stitches and making a half double crochet. So right here in your single crochet you're going to go in and make a half double crochet. In the next row end stitch, which is your half double crochet, you're going to make a half double crochet. So again, just make one half double crochet in each of the row end stitches, making them as neat as you possibly can until we reach our next corner. Okay, so I'm at my next corner. So again, with that corner, you're going to make three half double crochets. Again, you're going to turn your work and working along the bottom of your dishcloth, you're just going to make one half double crochet in each of the stitches across. When you get to that corner stitch right here, you're going to make three half double crochets. And then again, when you get to the other side of your dishcloth, you're going to make one half double crochet in each of the row end stitches. I will meet up with you when I get to this corner, and I will show you how to end round one of your border and move on to round two. So again, one half double crochet in each of the stitches around your entire dishcloth, making three half double crochets in the corner stitches. Okay, so I'm back at the beginning of my dishcloth and because we already made that half double crochet in the very first um, corner, you're just going to make two more half double crochets in that same corner. And then you're going to find your first half double crochet and just slip stitch that together. And that completes round one. So to move on to round two, you're going to simply chain one and you're going to crochet 
across the top and you're going to make a single crochet in each stitch across. So in this very first stitch right here, you're going to go ahead and make a single crochet and you're going to make a single crochet in each of these stitches across the top. I'll meet you over at the first corner and show you how to make the first corner before moving along to the rest of the dishcloth. Okay, so when you get to your first corner, you're going to make three single crochets into that corner. So your corner stitch is going to be right here. And again, you're just going to make three single crochets. Turn your work, and you're going to be working one single crochet along the side of your dishcloth in each stitch. So for the remainder of round two, you're going to work one single crochet around the entire dishcloth and in each corner you want to make sure you have three single crochets. So I will meet up with you when I get to my last corner, show you how to finish the last corner, and then I will show you what the completed dishcloth looks like. Okay, so I'm coming up on my last corner, so you're going to make three three single crochets in that last corner space. And then you're going to find your first single crochet and you're going to slip stitch that together. And then you're going to leave a long tail to weave in. And then I like to yarn over and pull through and then tighten. And then you would just use a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. So again, this is what the completed dishcloth looks like. And you have that little bit of a ridge on the front of your dishcloth. And this is how much yarn I had left over after using this skein for two dishcloths. So you might even be able to get three complete dishcloths depending on the size of it. You can always try it out and see how many you can get, but this is definitely a good amount of yarn that you could use for multiple dishcloths. Even if you wanted to use this to make some stripes with your dishcloth, you can definitely do that. So thank you so much for joining me today on learning how to make the Stay Golden dishcloth. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you give this pattern a try. Now it's time to like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, happy crocheting! Bye!